about the, the barbecue compared to the Silicon Valley? Not even close. Yeah, yeah, we took him to Terry Black's. I'm still hurt. I'm like, you want more? He's like, dude, yeah, I want some more. I'm like, we're in for it now. <laughs> There's a point of no return. And I think I had something of a gallbladder attack. Left. Yeah. Like, I, if, if, <laughs> I, I, go I, fund me. The GoFundMe's for more Terry Black's after my surgery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what it's like. Surgery's fine. I live from Canada, free healthcare, but we don't have free barbecue. <laughs> Welcome to the Coach Em Up podcast. I'm Tim Riley. I'm joined here today with Zach Zillner. What's up? What's and up? before we introduce our uh, strong, handsome, incredibly smart guest, um, I just want to say thank you to everyone who's been listening and watching. Certainly, um, I know I speak for Zach and myself here when I say that the growth that we've had in this short amount of time is way more than we expected. Way more. I thought it would just be my mom listening. Yeah. And she, shout I don't know. to my mom. Yeah. Thank big you, shout out to moms everywhere. Um, but uh, what we've also noticed is that so many of you are listening and not a lot of you are subscribing. And that... That makes us very that sad. That keeps me up at night. That does. And our moms. So don't yeah. do this to our mothers. Don't do it to us. Please, if you listen, subscribe, tell a friend. Thank you for all. Thank you to all of you who have been there with us the entire time. And if you're new, you're going to be very pleased to know that today we're joined with the legendary Jordan Shallow. Jordan, what's happening, dude? I, it's now it's like, dude, under promise, over deliver. What are we doing? <laughs> legendary? Legendary. No, let's not. Dun, dun, right. Dun, dun, purple. Dun, thank you. Thank you. I, I actually request my own theme music when I get here. That's right. Yeah. We should, I honestly, I, I wouldn't be opposed to the idea of doing like walkout music. Yeah. For guests. Yeah. What if you were to have a walkout song? Ain't no sunshine, Bill Withers. Fuck. Ooh. Done, how quick the, that was? I, dude, yeah. I've been waiting for someone to ask yeah. me that question. I've been waiting to be good enough at something to have, like, that was, the song came first. You know what it was? It was um, Anderson Silva came out in a fight way, way back, when the UFCs were running, like, once a quarter. Yeah. Not this, like, every weekend shit. Yeah. And he came out, and it was at a time where I think his English was still pretty not what it is now, which is still not great. Like, it's, not, it's not his first language. And he came out, and I think he did the DMX version of it, also oh. banger, heat, pure heat. <laughs> and he like sang with, it's, like, it's as if it was the only English he knew. And he came, and he like fucking dummy the guy in like seven seconds or something. Yeah. Like Spider Man kicked him in the head or something. Incredible. But uh, I was like, oh, you've won. Like that song. Like, so I, everyone it was, comes out to like really hype stuff, and if you just come out to yeah. some low key. You're the Undertaker at that yeah. point, right? Yes. So, yeah, that's mine for sure. Ripping yeah. that straight from Silva, shout out. I like that. Yeah. What, uh, first 48 hours in Austin uh, with the boys, what'd you think? Well, it's, see, it's, it's, it depends out? on if you're doing 48 hours in Austin with the boys or 48 Austin hours or 48 hours in Austin by yourself. Yeah. Like, yeah. I got the curated, like, I got the top drawer you period. did i know what this city is at its core and it's where i left in california so like you did <laughs> hey, hey, I think hey, like hey. A tr you did a <laughs> tremendous job don't come to austin unless these guys are fucking showing you around but yes i know i used to live in the silicon valley so like i know i know beneath the barbecue yeah, how about the, the barbecue compared to the Silicon Valley? We, oh, we, I mean, that's uh, a, I don't even think there is. Oh, there, actually, there is a place in San Jose, but not even not even close. Yeah, yeah. we took him to Terry Black's and got absolutely bodied. I'm still hurting. I was going to say, so I, unfortunately, I was sick yesterday, which is the, the fucking lamest thing I could ever do. But um, so they, they got to work out and then go and smash barbecue. And I just saw them post on social media just what looked like a near fatal dose of Terry Black's. Yeah. And I'm still very jealous. Well, we were at the meat line cut and I had what I thought would be a good one. I'm like, you want more? He's like, dude, yeah, I want some more. I'm like, all right, dude, like we're in for it now. <laughs> there's a point of no return. And we look back and, you know, there's that point where there's like a rib left each and you're like, oh, God, do we do it? Do we not? Do it, you do obviously. it. Yeah. yeah. I think I, I I think I had something of a gallbladder attack. Left. Yeah, like I if, if I don't know when this is going to get released, but I may be you know, like, and I'm like not even joking. Like, you're a GoFundMe. I, yeah, yeah. It's just you know the GoFundMe's for more Terry Blacks after my surgery. Yeah, yeah. that's what it's on. Like. Surgery's fine. I live from Canada, free healthcare, but we don't have free barbecue. Honestly, that's the loophole. Come to Austin, mm. just inject Terry Black into your veins. Yeah, go back home, healthcare. Uh, yeah, if it worked like that, yeah, 
I mean, I'd be dead on the make table in the lobby waiting Before for Before you it. ever yeah, got yeah. seen. Free comes at a price. I mean, I remember when I was in uh, undergrad in, in Cali, I, or sorry, in grad school in California, I got hit by a car on my bicycle on the way to the gym. What? Suburban Holy T-boned fuck. me in an intersection. Your fault is oh, fault. Hold on, time out. Or her fault. Who, yeah, who was exactly. more damaged, the Suburban it's, or you? Yeah, right, that's the old joke. I uh, slap tear, separation, left shoulder. Put, oh, yeah. I put it back in like Mel Gibson, Lethal Weapon 2 style. Hell and then yeah. decide the best thing to do immediately after was to throw my bike at the car. Yeah. So like I dislocated my shoulder again, again? throwing this fucking bike <laughs> at this vehicle. I was like, ah, damn, that hurts. And I got to put it back again. And it was cheaper <laughs> for me to book a flight from uh, would have been San Jose would have been the closest to Detroit, drive across the border where my parents live and get seen in a in, in um, uh, a hospital in Canada. than it would have been just to get an ambulance from Sunnyvale, California, where I was hit to the nearest hospital. Jeez, yeah, dude. Yeah. So, but I didn't do either. I just relocated my shoulder. And yeah. Hell yeah. Carried on with my life. Yeah. yeah. You know what you're doing. I mean, that's your first adjustment right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, like taking a, I, I ended up, there was like a lawsuit. Like she fucked up bad. And I had some <laughs> teachers. Yeah. It was, it was like two, three years of going through like getting, oh, what a but nightmare. it was a really good like firsthand account of like, hey, this is what the med legal system is. Like I obviously don't practice I'm cash only and I practice only with a handful of guys a year now, yeah. but like that was a big part of steering me away from what a lot of people get into as a career model, as a chiropractor, of like going through insurance and things like that. Just I got to see it well, just through the eyes of the patient. Sure. And I was like, this is, a, I don't want to, like, I feel bad that people have to go through this, but I'm not opting in to be part of the system as a clinician. Like it's just too many cooks in the kitchen. And like, I don't, I'd rather be poor than have to fuck around in this cesspool. Deal with this so, bullshit. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Uh, you know what, that, so this story, uh, reminds me. So obviously we know who you are. Uh, most people listening to this are going to know who you are for the small amount of people who don't know who Jordan shallow is listening to the show. Weird. It, 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 it's weird. It's weird that you, that, that people would know who I am. That's weird. That's a weird. Well, there's a lot of that'll never not be weird. There that's are weird, a lot of weird, weird as all you weirdos. That's, that's weird for you guys, I'm sure. We got it tacos is today and a guy named I, I, Weird. She's so weird. the other day I got stopped. This usually happens to my girlfriend, not me. Yeah. I'm just Kelly Matthews' boyfriend Learned. when we go places. The accessory. I am the accessory. Yeah. I carry the stuff. Yeah. Um, but I, someone stopped me the other day. We were at uh, oh, yeah. Lyft yeah. ATX. Yeah. He was like, dude, coach him up podcast, right? And I was like, yes. Maybe. Which is but weird. Also, I was there and he didn't say anything to me. <laughs> 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 yeah. But also weird. Like you mm. said, it was. It's it cool, though. It is cool. It's cool, it's cool and weird. Yeah. yeah. All right. So. Can you give us your the Jordan Shallow elevator pitch? How'd you get here today? I know there's a lot that's happened in the past ten, yeah. well, more than that years. But how'd you? When did you decide to become a coach? What did the process look like? And then, what are you up to now? Mm. Uh, all right, where do we wind the clocks back to? I so I started my post secondary education studying history and political science, and was playing pretty high level hockey in Canada at the time decided after a couple of years that it's like ah you know it just was about the people like i love the subject matter i travel i still read a lot of history and i enjoy it like we you know, we talked a little bit about politics it's you know it's, it's a hobby of mine but like it's it was the people in the lecture halls like then my classmates like ah, this is not my these aren't my people it's not yeah. my environment so i would train a lot for hockey and like i uh, started training at a young age to just get better at hockey that was like my whole life, hockey, 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 hockey. And then over time, I started to like really fall in love with training as I started to see improvements from training transfer over to sport. I was like, wow, like I didn't have a chance in hell in playing any high level hockey. And then I got in the weight room and all of a sudden it's like, oh, you know, getting calls from these teams and these schools. And I was like, that's that was the catalyst really wow i had no idea it's a gateway drug right there. Yeah. And then so what ended up happening was like after my second year of history, I had to make a decision. That's when you start to specialize. I'm like, am I going to go to law school? Am I going to go PhD route? And then I'm like, I'm probably not going to do any of these, right? And playing high level sports, you know, you get injured. And in our network where I grew up, it was like there was a couple of Kairos that were pretty solid that were, you know, outside of the conventional model. And back then, I mean, we're talking when I was 15 years ago and felt live longer, like really atypical for a chiropractor to be handling soft tissue injuries and talking about exercise and right. rehab. But for me, it was kind of standard. Like my gym teacher in high school was like, hey, go see this guy. He's great. He, he ran. So that out. was your first exposure with someone who was more multifaceted. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, 
and so I would go, I went to see him and like, I just, so that's what I thought the standard really was. I didn't really know what the stereotypes were. And it's a little bit different in Canada, I think, or at least it was back then. It was maybe more the norm in there in, in Canada than in the States. And then at the time I was a personal trainer and there was a couple of chiropractors who got personal trainers. Like one of my buddies trained, uh, this chiropractor was pretty well known, super friendly guy. Rover, Range Rover. I'm like, ah, but he kind of works like I do, right? Like he sees people in like a one-to-one -one setting. Like <laughs> they like to see him, they pay him more money and he drives a Range Rover. I was like, oh, well, I like personal training. Key takeaway, Range Rover. Range Rover, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which yeah. was like a big full circle moment. Yeah. With now I have one in my garage and it's just like, <laughs> but it's, so it comes kind of like these, these touch points early of like, hmm, I'm studying history poli sci. Don't know if I want to argue for a living and be a lawyer. I don't yeah. know if I want to be in, you know, another two years of post-secondary education with kids that wear like berets to school or like fedoras. I'm like, eh. <laughs> not a fedora not guy. Not a fedora guy. I don't know if I'm giving fedora vibes. And it's just like, so I made a switch over and I went to University of Toronto and I uh, changed majors to kinesiology, burned through two years through the summer, got all my credits and then was like, yeah, let's go to Cairo school. Like, and didn't really know, like, you know, I, I knew how, I, I inter interacted or intersected with Kairos. Like, you know, I had a couple of knee injuries and had a couple of like back issues. So like, I didn't know what the paradigm was. Mm -hmm. And then I ended up like kind of getting thrust into like the belly of the beast and being like, whoa, wait, like this stuff, really? And like, this is kind of strange, but kind of kept to myself on, you know, going to Cairo school, if anyone's listening to in chiropractic college, like there's a, there's a subculture within the profession of like, you know, if we think of conventional Western medicine as like the core, or the center, you can start looking at ancillary sort of like more hands on therapies or alternative therapy. Like, and you can put physical therapy as like the adjacent left and then Cairo adjacent to that. And then you can kind of get into like osteopathy and all that kind of floats around there. And then you get into naturopaths. But there's that line goes into like crystals and some weird shit. Right? Yes. And you're like, OK, so this is sort of where everyone agrees and whether or not it's they should or not. Every, the, the consensus is Western medicine, MD, cool. Right. DPT. Yeah, you're going to get a look. You're not going to get jokes made. Cairo, like, yeah, you're probably going to be the butt of like a handful of jokes. Osteos can be lumped in there, but they can kind of go close to the MD route in the States. But you're like, you're you're on the horizon. Like you can either go to Pride Rock or you can go to the Elephant Graveyard. Mm -hmm. People are like, oh, crystals. From my elephant graveyard. <laughs> yeah, and I'm yeah. like, yo. And in school, <laughs> it's nuts because it's like, you know, you're it's it's like you're vying for resources, right? Like there's 30, 40 of us in a class. Like we're all kind of cordial. It's another four years in school. We're kind of in the same room in our same space. But like, you know, how do you rank order? And it gets like really competitive. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people are like doing seminars and like not telling other people what they're doing. Oh, I'm going to like visit my mom this week. I saw you at that fucking seminar. I dude. saw you there. Don't you even son of a bitch. Like you lying changed, son of a bitch. They like changed their email signature to some like weird initial for something <laughs> they took. I'm like, what the fuck is that? And I was just like, I don't know, dude. I just want to train. Right. So I went to nothing. Like I, I went to school. I got my grades good. And I mean, you got to pass every class with 70%. I played pool with my now business partner and best friend who was, I like that he played, he was big into the CrossFit scene. Like he just loved to train mm -hmm. and I never did any of that. And, um, I just, I just worked out never went to seminars, never really studied as enough as I had to, but I never, <laughs> Jokes on a, them. It seemed to work out. Yeah. And I never, I never missed a lift and he was the same. And like, we weren't super tight during school. And then when we graduated, you know, I had just kept up my lifting. He had kept up his lifting. Everyone else kind of got lost in the sauce of mm -hmm. like, you know, trying to be like the smartest. And it's like, you know, it really just came down to it's, you know, I said this the other day on a podcast. It's like there's a difference. The tactics you use to win arguments are not the tactics you use to solve problems. And it seems like a lot of the the ancillary education was tactics to win arguments mm -hmm. because people love to be contentious with chiropractors. It's yeah. like I don't want to fuck and all of that. All I don't want to do with any of that. But if I have the tactics to solve problems, then I'll get by by my merit. So I got into lifting weights and then it's, dude, it's a, if I pull on every single string that got me here, like I started an Instagram account in my second year. And then this happened to when I was training, there was this pro bodybuilder that was like writing for bodybuilding.com. And like, that was a thing. It was like sponsored by Cellucor. And I like kind of 
bullied him one day and I was like, yo, dog, like, are you done with that? <laughs> like, I'm working in. And he's like, yo, I fuck with this guy. Like, no one's ever fucking come up to <laughs> no me. No one's ever like, said that. big dog me like that. And then we ended up training together. And then I wrote for him uh, in his website. And then I started uh, working at Apple. And then I worked at Stanford. And then I graduated and I kept working for those places. And then I started one practice. And then I started another practice. And then I started a podcast. And me and my business partner started the business. And then, yeah, that's then that was eight years ago and it's kind of just been like airplanes and podcasts and athletes and countries and lounges and <laughs> hotels and yeah, how many kind of flights one, have you been on this year to, to when i fly back to toronto this morning or this afternoon it'll be flight 50 on the year so yeah he told he we had talked about this a little earlier that is appalling to me my low back is I'm, hurting come on now no yes you can troubleshooting your whole job is to troubleshoot you <laughs> fuck come on listen no, you sort you, well so speaking of troubleshooting you said something zach's gonna roll his eyes because i say this shit all the time <laughs> do you know what's coming Better so get it right than to get it right. so yes yes so but you said the, the tactics to win an argument mm. are not the same tactics that you would use to uh find a solution to a problem yeah yeah um, and something I heard a long time ago that I love is I don't want to be right. I want to get it right. Right. And when you said that, obviously it's like one of my favorite sayings and I apologize to every listener who's heard me say it 10,000 times, but it's, it's been a guiding principle in my life. Um, and it's been able to even move past just training. Um, but well, you, so you observing that, how have you carried that with you? out into these other endeavors and into training and into prescript and you know is it a big thing for you oh yeah i mean i think anyone who's ever been in a relationship will probably <laughs> heed that advice very yeah. well he said outside foremost, of training right? and yeah. i was like yeah, yeah, well, it's, yeah. But, I, but a relationship can teach you a lot because like sure. i think and, and but there's a couple ways to look at this like fundamentally what i think i've gotten good at is like when we use the word relationship, we think like, oh, like you have a partner, you have a girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever. But like, I think it's helped me with understanding relationships from the sense of how things relate to one another. Mm -hmm. Like, and that's a big part of the way that like I teach is, okay, someone might not understand the relationship between a particular stimulus or an adaptation or two particular exercises that look way different, but have an underpinning to it how can I explain how these things relate? So like getting good at communicating in relationships, it, most people think of this like, what are you a fucking marriage counselor? It's like, no, 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 no. Like look higher level at what that word actually means yes. in the context in which you can use the word relationships. Like my job at its core, whether I'm communicating to an athlete or a student or a colleague or someone who's like a, like a surgeon, whatever, is you know communication is a really limited tool and verbal communication is ex it just impressively impressively inefficient at doing what it's supposed to do like i have an idea in my head and that, that's that's tainted with my experience and my uh you know how my day's been and all of the things <laughs> it's, just, it's this polluted mess of something that i'm trying to get clear and then using like I don't know, 26 letters, a couple of phonemes, some words in a sentence. A few uhs for me. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but you know, sometimes that works, yeah. right? Yeah, but in, yeah. in, and then I need to, you know, upload this to my, or download this to my mouth hole, mm -hmm. throw it at your ear hole and upload it into your brain and hope to, yeah, pray to everything <laughs> no. holy that I get that right. And it's like, fuck. <laughs> so it's like, all right, where can I find concepts that are more universal that kind of say what I need to say without saying it? And I can attach my ideas to these relationships so people can decode and unzip almost like a compressed folder with large files. And that's what we're trying to do, right? Like the other thing is you have to do it expediently. Yeah. Right? I have to do this fast, right? The amount I can compute, the amount of compute I can use or the amount of space I can use in words per minute, I can talk really fast, but I'm probably going to be inefficient at communicating what I need to. So how can I use, we talked about this earlier, like how can I use stories? Like how can I use these things that are more universal and just sort of like use those as use those stories or relationships as vectors to carry my point across on this thing so it's some it, it's the it to answer your original question it is like the basis of everything i do is understanding relationships and it's like it can be hard in the social media space i see a lot of people tripping themselves up and like i'm still human like i want to argue with people but like you know you said 
um, how did you word it? You said, um, um, be right versus get it right. Yes. Right. So, mm -hmm. and, and that's, you know, I first learned that in relationships. It's like, you can, you can, you can be right in a relationship and still be sleeping on the fucking couch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. And it's like, yeah. I know a lot of really smart guys who don't get it right. Yeah. And then what it's taught me above all else is like that principle is like, first and foremost, whatever business you're in, you're in the people business. Right? Yeah. As much as like, you know, I talk about applied biomechanics and functional anatomy and, and injury risk prevention, and return to play protocols and all of those things that can have like a body of evidence, both empirically and anecdotally. And, and I can tap in on all these. And I've, I've done a lot in my career, I think as much as I could have done anyways. Uh, but if I don't have, you don't have the people side, you're fucked. Yeah. Right. So it's like, it don't mean shit. you, you got to pay attention to the thing that actually matters. Right. And I think a lot of times I know guys who want to be right and are right, empirically right. Just be so wrong get it so wrong <laughs> yeah. right. language and it's like right. look you can like you can be good or be good at it right and it's like if being good at it like getting it right is getting it communicated effectively so it's like people spend all their time trying to be right and on like you know like oh wow that was like a hot take or like yeah. right. most, people, or most people are just contrary and most people yeah. go like this guy's doing it this way i'm gonna do it this way and, it, and it's like great. ooh, yeah ah. edgy and it's like you know who doesn't give a fuck like literally everyone who pays me money to do my job <laughs> yeah <laughs> everyone right. who's getting results yeah, yeah. right right yeah. right so right. that's for me it's been and it's tough like you know I, I think a large part of it comes with doing it for a long time and getting like a kind of exposure to some negativity, but also like when you, when you realize like, look, you know what you like, what you eat doesn't make me shit. I don't give a fuck. Right. And right. Like, it, once you have some security, once you've actually got results, you're like, oh, yeah. okay. Like I don't, I don't care. Right. Like, what are you doing that for? And like, I, Ricky, it's funny. We were talking about stand-up comedy before. And Ricky Gervais has this bit about like not understanding arguments on the internet. Like if you were walking through a park and you saw some paper ta taped to a tree with like the cutouts on the bottom with a number and it says free guitar lessons, call below. Yeah. And like imagine calling that guy. It'd be like, yo, free guitar lessons? Like, yeah, fuck you, man. <laughs> <laughs> what? Like, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's the cornerstone. Like we're in the people business and people focus on, and we'll talk principles, I'm sure. Maybe not. Maybe we'll just talk about fucking life shit or whatever. Barbecue, Terry Black. Hey, that's yeah, my real atherosclerosis. Yeah, good. A, a, a mixture of all is we're kind of the potion how, we're how going How do you for. navigate that with like social media? Like when you first started, there's obviously people that are going to probably badger you more than mm. now because you have the credibility of you work with XYZ athletes. Like how have you navigate that? At, and then some kind of pitfalls that you fell into younger that you don't even mess around with now. Yeah, I think one of the things in like kind of accepting, and maybe not accepting, I think I got into doing what I do now because I inherently like solving problems. I, I fixate and it can be bad and pretty disturbing <laughs> to all relationships. Like I'm, like my brain is just like an the oil fixer. painted fence that yeah. chips and I find like a, like I find like a piece and I pull on it like, oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, you know, it, it, when it's fundamentally like a problem I need to solve, right it, it, like that's kind of how i frame everything but that's the solution to solving problems when that becomes how you approach everything is like there's an obstacle to this how do i overcome the obstacle and it's very devoid of emotion when i'm like it, it's, it's when i was a kid i used to really love knots like i used to say if someone had a knot like in like a hoodie or something i'd be like oh, yeah, yeah. Let me get i got it, it. give me because it's like it's literally just there's no no one there's no, don't fucking touch it right. <laughs> But it's like, there's no emotion in it. It's yeah. just sort of this, like, you're just like unwinding this thing. So mm. for me, solving a knot is easy when you understand how it got knotted. So when solving problems, it's, you actually, the, the hardest part about solving a problem that people don't realize, regardless of the problem, is how you frame the problem, right? And it's funny because like, I don't know, I, I, I like, I like occupying my brain with things I don't understand as a bit of a vacation from doing something that I have to hyper understand. So I'll like read and listen to a lot of stuff about like, like physics and AI and, and just things I don't understand, black holes or space time. And one of the things that they'll talk about with like developing AI, like literally building robots is like, oh, like f actually like framing the world. It's, a, it's literally called the framing problem. And hmm. they don't know how to, you know, there's reasons there's not robots walking around that look like us is because we do a, a, an exceptional job of framing our environment appropriately, like how to understand what it is we're looking at. Like vision is, and that's a whole, that's more of a training concept, but like 
when I look at solving a problem, I have to frame it appropriately first, right? So like, that's kind of how I approach it is like, well, what is the problem I'm trying to solve, right? So framing it appropriately. So what I did to, to maybe get back on track of your question is, you know, I was a competitive powerlifter when I started my social media. And I trained at the, arguably the strongest gym in the world. Like my first patient in clinical practice was this guy named Dan Green. Dan is oh shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, my dude, god, you yeah. just took me back, yeah, dude. Yeah, Old yeah, school. Dude. Whoa. Yeah. I remember like adding Dan on Facebook. Yeah. And like, Hell like yeah. orange fucking like, you know, the the beanie, beanie exactly. hat and like no shirt on. Just I'm like, what is this human <laughs> being? And then serendipitously through the gym I just worked out at rather than going to fucking conferences and shit there's this guy who would squat a super heavyweight guy who would like spend do his squat days at this gym his name is bill newman got to know him really well like yo homeboy can fucking move and like we got became friends told him what i was doing he would do some of his heavier lifts with dan got connected with dan through bill and then he got, dan would come see me and when i was still in school and mm -hmm. then ended up practicing in his gym so I ended up like getting into competitive powerlifting through Dan. I would treat him and then he would coach me. And I remember going and to my- Dan's like cool as shit. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I'm having flashbacks now. It's like, I remember him like playing like Lil Boosie and deadlifting a house yeah. and me being like, I just want to be that yeah. guy. I need to be. That guy's awesome. the beanie? Where's yes. the beanie? Yes. Yes. You throw on E40 as so. yes. yeah. yes. Bay Area yeah. legend. So he- <laughs> Tell me what to go. So he would- so he would coach me and we're going to my first meet thinking like mind you everyone i trained with had a world record right they did uh, andrew herbert christy hawkins emily who dan green if you guys are in powerlifting you'll know the names and then like me <laughs> like hey, <laughs> hey what's happening guys <laughs> and so the way i would frame it was like you know i went to my first meet not knowing what powerlifting was and i was like oh fuck, this is gonna suck he said, like, what are you talking about he's like i don't know dude i'm gonna get smashed he goes dude you are gonna win this thing running away and I'm like, what? Because like me and Andrew and fucking Christy and Emily are like the best in the world. Yeah. We're not in this meet. You're going to fucking crush. And like, I did really well and I won the best lifter. I was like, oh, okay. Like, so then when I started putting up content, I kind of always had this, like th this thing to play off and I could reframe criticism really well. Cause like, you know, I, I've competed against, you know, it would, to what degree people can name powerlifters, like your big name, like Larry yeah. Williams or Larry Wheels, right? Like I've competed in the same meet as Larry. Now, when I, what I would do is like, when I was powerlifting, my mindset was I wasn't competing against Larry because I can't. You know, they basically invited me if I like agreed to put chairs away after the yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> hey, like you're you're like good enough to be here, but like you don't have to change that many places. Right, yeah. Right, you're, right. Right. you're like the start. You're the I was the first yeah, guy. Yeah, you're the first your first yeah. guy on deck. But yeah. it's like, you know, I, I was getting into like the education space and I would put like content on an Instagram. And I was like, well, who am I really competing with here? It's like, I'm not competing with Larry or Dan or Andrew or whoever. I was like, I'm I'm really competing against like academics. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, you know, you see guys like Brad Schoenfeld, PhD, who's like putting out like a lot of research at the time and kind of putting that into social media or like, you know, even I don't know. There's a handful of guys who are putting out academics. I'm stuff. trying to think at that time who was coming up. I feel like it was Schoenfeld. Yeah. Galpin. Galpin, Perhaps? yeah, Galpin was on the, I mean, he's just been on the company. Yeah. Galpin's a fucking wizard. Though. He is. Yeah, he should have just fucking, everyone should have been like, oh yeah, this guy, <laughs> it's the guy. Yeah. But yeah, like, and so for me, it was like, can I, Cressy? Yeah, Cressy is big. Like Cressy took a YouTube channel all the way to the fucking New York Yankees. Like shout out. I actually, we spoke at the same event really, really early on in my career. I was like, yo, this guy's cool. like, hey, he's cool as shit. Yeah. But I was like, okay. And he used to be a power lifter, but he was like a little bit smaller. So I was yeah. like, okay, can I be stronger than him? So when I go to a meet, I'd be like, I'm in my mind, I'm not competing with all those guys. In my mind, I'm competing against, you know, the Schoenfeld, which is like, you know, I've met Brad a few times, super nice dude, super smart. But like, this is not what he focuses attention on. Right. So if someone comes at me and it's like, yeah, but like, what do you know? There's always going to be a couple of people like, I don't know, dude squats like 750 plus. So like, I was about, just, you just going to like, bring yeah. that up. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. Which is, which is kind of to your point of like, <laughs> you know, do you want to get it right or be right? Yeah. It's like in this profession results, like you said. So it's like, look, you might not, you might not be right, but you can get it right. Like, yep. I'll get right. Figure something bar, out. Right. And at least to a level where not many people have. Yes. Right? So, and then when I was like, you know, when, when I'd be, when I'd be teaching, that's where I compete with like, you know, the likes of Larry and Dan and all that. Like, can I be as, as, you know, can I be academic? Can I communicate? Really? It's not about being smart. It's about knowing how to communicate what you know, that download, upload, zip folder, mouth hole, your whole shit. Right. Mm -hmm. So it was like, that was where I looked at it. it was like, okay, 
how can I differentiate myself in these different arenas so that I can kind of have this like unfuck withableness. And, and a lot of it, man, honestly, like a lot of it was came down to strategy. It was like, where am I, where are my weaknesses as far as like being unfuck withable? And like, you're always going to have holes and you can critique yourself into the fucking ground. But I think it's worthwhile for people. Like if you're a coach and you're trying to like create and like make moves, like you got to create leverage for yourself. Right. So like, and a lot of times in making it to any sort of like next step in your career, it really comes down to how much shit you can eat. Yeah. Right. And it's like, yo, it's I'll true. fucking, I'll shovel shit more than anyone. Like, you know, grew up doing it. They never had money growing up. Now I had less money because I was in debt. So I was in negative money. I remember shaking a guy down outside of a Safeway on Shoreline <laughs> Avenue. <laughs> Dude, I was just divorced. I was, uh, I was trying, I'm a quarter million dollars in debt. I'm fucking living out of my forerunner. I'm doing the math, whether I have to walk to the grocery store or if I have to drive, I have to get gas and then I have less money for food, but I burn more calories because I'm walking and I probably got to make two trips. <laughs> and I remember this, this poor, poor homeless guy, quite literally, was like kind of shaking a can outside. Like you got more money than me. And he got a little like aggressive with me. I was like, oh, motherfucker. <laughs> well, you got, bitch. And I like, and I'm like, yo, it was a crazy homeless bum fight. It was like world star shit. And I was just like, I was, dude, I was just like an unstable kid with a ton of debt and like not like scared out of my mind. But yep. it's like the, na- the number of, like I, I kind of put this to- map together of like <laughs> there's, there's wealth and status. And it's like the number of times I have to have this conversation with coaches and like, look, and this might not be the only way to get there, but for me, it's a big part of it. It's like, you know, when I, I got a job at Apple, I'm not making any money, right? It's a status play, yeah. right? And so it's like, okay, I came out of school and then I got this job, but I'm working, I'm fucking seeing 250 patients a week. I'm putting my hands in ice in between patients because I'm seeing so many. And I'm trying to be a competitive power lifter on top of that. And it's like, this is all status, right? Like my, a, a total in powerlifting to a, to a certain audience, is that no money in powerlifting? What is what? Right. Why did I do it? I remember pulling my biggest deadlift to win this meet called a Reebok Record Breakers. It was a pretty big meet, and the thought that went through my head is, you maybe if you pick this up, you won't be in debt for as long. And then I was like, fuck it, all right, pick it up, seven fifty five, pick it up, Let's <laughs> time wrap. to pick it up. Yeah, exactly. It's like it's not even an option at that point. But it's like is you have to understand how to trade that, and a lot of what you run into today with coaches, and I'm kind of bringing this a little far afield, but it's like I think it's a point if you're a coach and you're like. You look at the state of the industry, you like you need to understand where where where's your best position of leverage. That's where you need to move to first. Mm-hmm. That's the next thing you have to do, right? Like, do I want to be corporate forever? No, absolutely not. But do, is that a leveraged opportunity for me? Yeah, because you know what I did immediately after that, I had some opportunity at Stanford, and it's like Apple, Stanford, sure. Like, they yep. don't look, it's Silicon Valley. It's like they don't even look. Yeah, good enough go, for Apple. Good. Yeah, enough exactly. For us, yeah. Mm-hmm. The amount of crossover between those, there should be a bus that just goes from the yeah. fucking convocation yeah. at Stanford <laughs> to Cupertino. <laughs> it probably is. So it's leverage, and then I did that. It's like you know, you guys have had, you've been in the game for longer than I have, and it's like, I mean, I'm twelve maybe 12 years ago, 10, 12 years ago, strength coach for like, a, like not a big team, rugby, men's and women's, you know what I'm making, yeah, yeah. right? In s- the Silicon Valley, yeah. most expensive yeah. housing market in the world. It's like, yeah, dog, I'm eating shit, mm-hmm. right? So it's like I'm leveraged, but it's leveraged. Now, yeah. even to this day, people are like, oh yeah, that guy was a strength coach at Stanford, right? And it's like, I uh, talked to Luca Hosvar, Hoss, I can never say his name, Hosvar the other day, and he has this concept of like wallet and watch. And it's like, like where you spend your time and money is really what you're trying to build, right? And from there, it was mm-hmm. like the network I had is nuts. Like I look back now, like that's how I met Corey. Mm-hmm. That's how I met Max Schmarzo. That's how I met Chase Phelps. So it's like, you know, now it's like, okay, I get, now I have, now I have leverage from the, those networks. And then, then it was like status, well, status, well. So you got to like understand those things. So early days, it was like, I back myself into a corner. I had no choice, which is a really useful thing. It is to be very helpful. Like two of the things that drive evolution, and this is not just for humans, but in general, is a change of environment and error. Those are those are what drive evolution. So it's like, okay, I'll just do that. I'll just jump around as much as I can to the next leverage opportunity, gain experience, gain a network, and fail as often as I can tolerate. Because mm-hmm. I know that's going to how I evolve. That's how things evolve. That's how we fucking- see the bigger picture. I find with like so many of our assistants, these young interns and stuff are picky about where they want their first job. If it's like a good city or this and that, and it's like just recognize your first job probably isn't going to be your last place you go. 
So it's like, it's better for you to take maybe an unpaid thing with an NFL team or someone super smart to kind mm -hmm. of set yourself up for the next step than, you know, chasing the bag or anything like that. Coach Em Up is proud to be sponsored by Plyomat. Plyomat is a jump mat that measures ground contact times, vertical jump height, and reactive strength index. Plyomat's trusted by over 750 coaches in 25 different countries. It's something that you can use in training day in and day out to give immediate feedback and drive output and intent. Plyomat's always in stock. When you order your Plyomat, you can get it with one to three business days and start your training immediately. If you get a group of athletes challenging each other to jump higher, get off the ground quicker, it transforms that workout into a highly competitive, highly potent stimulus. If you would like access to the best jump mat on the planet, use Coach em Up 5 to get 5% off at checkout. Again, code Coach em Up 5 for 5% off. Come jump with us, get a plow mat. The Coach em Up podcast is sponsored by Squat Wedgies. Tim, what are Squat Wedgies? Squat Wedgies are an adjustable squat wedge, seven, 13, and 20 degrees. It's big enough to elevate your whole foot and not just your heel. Because it's rubber, it doesn't slide on surfaces. It's 22 pounds. So it's durable and stable enough for even your biggest athletes. There's a 90 day risk-free trial. The shipping is free and get 15% off squat wedgies with our discount code, coach them up 15. Coach them up 15 for 15% 15 off of the best squat wedge on the planet. Something that came up when you were talking about this experience is because we get questions all the time. I'm sure you do too. How do I get to where you are? Or, you know, uh, what would you recommend? What books, whatever. And, um, you talked about leveraging like the difference between like status and wealth, but I think what happens a lot of time is people can like see that playbook, um, or at least conceptually grasp that like I should, like th this is a potential path, but there's, there's like this barrier to entry for taking action or a barrier, I should say, where it's like, there's something that seems to hold a lot of people back. And I, I don't know if it's just the fear of failure or the fear of it not going the way they think it should. And in my mind, I, it comes down to two things. It's like, it, it's, it's, or really one, it's just the fear of the unknown, mm. not really knowing how it's, if it's going to work, mm. how it'll work, you know, all that. So, can, did you experience any of that, Jordan? No, no, because I think it's I I don't think it's the fear of the unknown. I I think it's actually uh, I think there's there's whether it's conscious or subconscious. I think those people who sit on that fence, they are hyper aware. They're hyper aware mm. of their intentions and what drives them, and they know that it's not sustainable. Like one of the things, and it and I don't want to discourage anyone from reaching out. And this is not a playbook on how to wherever I am to get to here. This is the playbook on how I got here. Yeah. And that's you got to you have to you know, like you have to aggressively back yourself. Like you have to have a like you have to have a fuck you in the back of your head to literally. And look, I've gotten in so much trouble with that. But at the same time, it's like <laughs> I know that I'm willing to back it up yeah. to the death. And like what and it, honestly, what I mean by that is simply is like the leverage opportunities I put myself in, I, I'm framing the scenario in a place where I know I can win. And it's the nice part about, and what I mean by this is like, every relationship that I've had that's ever got me anywhere was in the gym. Because when it's all said and done, if you shut down my Instagram accounts tomorrow, I'm still going in for a 7 a.m. lift. I'm still, you know, well, tomorrow I'll be walking to the gym at 5.30 in the morning, on King Street down, oh, gym opens at six. Like, th there's, we've gotten away from that. And it's like, be good or be good at it. It's like, look, that you're, you're your resume, right? You guys are both fucking clearly, like if anyone had to guess on the street, like, well, what do you think this guy does for a living? It's like something to do with lifting weights. Like, <laughs> and there's a big, but like, yeah. look, that's, you know, that was frowned upon for like a little bit. And we kind of had this like clipboard era of strength coaches. Totally. But I think we still have now the clipboard's been replaced with a tripod. Mm -hmm. And it's like, Absolutely. Okay. and it's like, look, and like, I, again, it's a framing thing. If I'm going to go meet with someone about a particular opportunity and I want that opportunity to be fruitful for both of us, I'm going to have to give them the real me. And the yeah. real me is the guy that's not going to skip training sessions for, for the better or worse. Like I probably should take more days off than I do because I'm fucking on airplanes. I don't recover where shit. You know, I trained push two days ago, but you're, yeah, let's fucking, yeah, let's run, run it back. Yep. Blank and slate. Blank slate. Blank right. Slate. And it's just like, 
there's there's a lot, and I, again, this is not necessarily advice, but I want people, if you're listening and you're a coach and you're trying to make moves, it's like, you gotta have an honest conversation with yourself. Cause I don't think it's a fear of the unknown. I think it's an actual fear of the known and they know that their heart's not in it. Like their yeah. incentive is maybe the status. Right? The, my incentive is like, dude, I get to fucking, I get to clang and bang with the best in the world and it's fucking sick. Yep. But it's like, you better believe that a big part of me being able to do that is because I can suit up at a moment's notice, ice cold and grip a fucking trap bar deadlift with any old lineman in the league, yep. right? And so it's like, I don't ever have fear of that because I'll, I'll go into the ring. I'll be the, in the ring, you wanna put me in? Like, this is my fucking fourth and long. This is my world series. And it's like, put, I'm clutch. Like you yeah. wanna be in the arena, you don't wanna be a fan. I think a lot of people see what, you know, you guys do and they're like, that'd be cool if I could do that. And they're like a fan of working with, whoever you're working with mm. instead of actually being about the X's and O's of you, I, I think it's furthermore to a fan, you don't want to be a commentator. Yeah. It's a commentator culture. Like if you put a fucking floating head over my video and you have something to say, <laughs> dog, I'll show you a floating head. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> can I go on a rant Please. with you? I, rant rant. there is a, there's a, a movement I've seen particularly within the context of social media where people don't even make their, own content anymore they oh, just yeah, put themselves over the top of other people's content good bad and different and then they just comment on that oftentimes people who don't have any perceivable uh level of expertise or experience and that is their means of growing their platform and for some reason it fucking makes me so mad to see someone just it's like a, being Explaining a leech your workout. being yeah. a leech leeching off of the the hard work or the person who is in the motherfucking arena and th and then they're just basically riding the coattails of that person to get what in this case would be some sense of perceived status it's literally for the birds. But yeah. think about it like, you know, th that exists in every ecosystem. Yeah. So true. Like you're yeah. fucking, you're a gator sitting there. It's like, go ahead, pick out of my teeth. But mm -hmm. we know that you're gonna be fucking pink mist if I close my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> right? You live Flip on the- that. Yeah, like you, <laughs> you live on the, gr the good graces of me have being too busy to fucking eat you. Yeah. And it's like, and look, that's a, that's a, that's a snippet of what goes on in my brain. <laughs> And that's in there, but I don't share that very often. I don't, I, I'll never like someone comes up to me in the gym or ask, like, no, no, I'm very, I'm, 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 I will be as gracious with my time as I can. Cause I got here largely to the graces, but on the graces of other people being sure. generous with their time. Yep. And I will pay that forward into infinity. But like, I, and so I don't want you to take this and be like on some gog and shit. Like, dude, I'll, I'll, I, I cry probably four or five times a week. Cause like, what is my life? Like I get to come hang out with you guys. Oh, I'm so full from barbecue. I'm going to try it now. <laughs> but it's like, uh, so I'm not trying to be on some tough guy shit. Like I'm yeah. so, you know, I went from sleeping in a car eight years ago in an airport parking lot to fucking- Sleeping get, on airplanes. Sleeping on airplanes, <laughs> yeah. Like, and it's so like, I, I'm, I don't want to impart this like tough guy culture. I sure, just, sure. I just want to impart people to be self-critical and to, there's a voice in there that goes like, when I walk into an interview or, you know, if I'm consulting with a team or I'm talking to a player, like, you go because they know mm -hmm. like what i love i mean I, lo I love animals i've used a few animal references like you know we Dad basically dogs. yeah well because what i like about animals i went on a safari in africa oh fuck yes ago. unbelievable so i went to like the the tanzania 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 kenya border during the great migration oh. and what i what i kind of like had this moment of was and I kind of like a click moment was you know everyone says that like all oh, animals have instincts it's like no no, 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 no. animals don't have instincts Animals are instincts, mm. right? Like they just, they are purely, that is what they they're are. Not, we have instincts, like a mother, you know, I would say women have a crazier instincts just because they still have that very primal child where, where, yeah. where it's like, you know, I could probably be like, oh, this guy's probably gonna pop off in a gas station on, you know, third and Pike in Seattle, yeah. some trash neighborhood. <laughs> like, I'm just gonna get the fuck out of here before this guy does what he's gonna <laughs> yeah. do. But like, yeah. I'm not reading minds here. Like guy's yeah. got three teeth and a fucking yeah. ice pick yeah. in his hand. Right. Right. Yeah, I, mean? I know what happens next. But it's like, <laughs> when, what I've loved about working with athletes is like, you know, the, the, the adage of like, oh, this guy's a dog. Like, what does that mean? It's like, a lot of times it means just like they are instinct or they have, they're, they're far more to the instinctive spectrum than a human beings can actually give credit for. Like they're, what you can call game IQ or just like high res or like high velocity pattern recognition. It's like, 
one of the things they, they these guys just smell blood in the water right that's their jaw like yep. some of these dudes that are just like tuned to take someone's fucking head off like they are trained to find holes they are trained to find weakness they are trained and it's like you don't think that they know that or consciously or subconsciously can do that with personalities like if you sit down in a room and you don't like if i can't ex explain something down to the level i've had this you know i worked with a, a pretty prominent american stand-up comedian a few years ago and like he just hit me up in the DM in Miami. It was a really kind of funny interaction. And he's like selling out stadiums. And he's like, yo, uh, uh, let's train. Like literally DM me and be like, yo, dog, let's train. I was like, yeah, bet. Like let's do fucking eight o'clock on Monday here. He goes, done. Shows up. And he's like, well, how's this going to work? And I could sit with him. I'm like, dude, this ain't, this ain't fucking mothership, right? This ain't, yeah. this ain't, you know, the seller. This is, this is my seller, right? This is my <laughs> fucking Air Canada Center. <laughs> fucking, this is my stadium. And so it's like, he goes, and I've had this happen so often. I'm like, well, like you tell me the level of detail that you want me to explain things to, and we'll go there. And sometimes he's like, dude, I'll just let you run sometimes. And he goes, I don't, I don't know what you're saying. Fair play, you're a fucking stand-up comedian. Right. But I, I can recognize laterally what you're doing and how I approach. Like this dude used to, you know, this dude would wait, stay up till four in the morning practicing walking out on stage. Right. Damn. And it's like, you know, how many times I've stayed up till 430 in the morning, you know, writing or reading or, or, or treating athletes or whatever. And it's just like, he goes, I, I don't really know what you do, but I, I understand how you do it. Right. Like I understand the depth and detail without understanding like the, the finer points to it. So it's like, I think that that trepidation, like the idea of imposter syndrome mm -hmm. is like, you got to go back in the lab and you got to, you got to outwork that. Like you got to sit. Cause if you don't, and you want to sit down with some of these guys, like you, you might, you might fool some people some of the time, but you're not going to fool all the people all the time. Right. No. And it's like, if you're, what are your priorities? Like, what do you value? Like to me, bring it. All right. I want to watch you train. I want to watch you train. And it's like, if you're, if you're willing to fucking bring it to an inch of your life, like, all right, I want to fucking, I fuck with this guy. This yep. guy's straight. And and that that's where I think honestly where a lot of trepidation comes from is pipe cleaner arm strength coaches that hide behind clipboards that are trying to be right rather than get it right. And it comes down to, unfortunately, and we've come full circle, at least in my brain, of like, look, you gotta be able to fucking hang because yeah. it's the people business. And those people want people next to them that'll fucking go to war. And, and again, I don't love the war moniker and I don't love the tough guy, but it's like, what do you love? Everyone's like, oh, like, you know, you got to want it. It's like, nah, dude, that's not it, man. Like, it's not, it's like what inspires you. And, and like, when you define the word inspire and understand like the etymology of it, it literally means like what breathes life into you. That's what inspire me. Mm. And it's like, well, yeah, training inspires me. Like literally I train every day because I like, it helps me with work. It helps me with my relationships. It's like, if you don't love it, then that's cool, man. But like, don't think you're going to listen to some fucking motivational speech and be on the other side of your problem, dog. That's going to live rent free in there until you sort it out. Dude, if, if you're having to hype yourself up to get up every day by listening to Tony Goggins speak for 30 to 45 <laughs> seconds before you even get out of bed, fuck. Yeah. You're in trouble. Yeah. yeah. But I think, you know what? A step further than that, at least those people recognize as a problem. Yeah. True at least that. those people are Adam, grasping yeah. at something. Like yeah. that's a step. You know, there's people out there just angry. Like they're yep. angry that they're not in the right Resentful. position. And it's like, look, dude, I've been there. I remember, and shout out K Star. K Star is fucking, but I remember being in grad school. You know, I'm a quarter in the hole. Don't come from money. I'm like, I've made the dumbest decision of my life, fucking learning how to crack people's necks, thinking that I'm going to make this money back. What a dumb idea. And like Kelly was like, sit stand desks were just on the come up. He was like in the process of, I think, writing the- um, Supple effort. So, uh, no, it would have been after that. The second book about like standing oh, yeah. and all that. And there was like, he was selling this like swing bar thing through Rogue. And yeah. like, I feel bad case. I've been listening to this. I'm so sorry, dog. And <laughs> I, I was like, but I've been there. And and I remember posting it on Facebook, old. And it was like, I got an idea. Why don't we pin Kelly's under our desk and just repeatedly kick him in the head rather than spending $75 <laughs> on a little bar that does this? Like, I was just like <laughs> mad. And yeah. I so I get it. But like awareness was the first step. And like the, yeah. the last step isn't the Goggins video. The last step is like, check yourself. Like, are you, who are you mad? Are you mad? No, fuck he starts the fucking dude. You get to know this guy. He's like the nice guy on the planet and he's mm -hmm. smart as shit. It's like, and you know what he's really good at? Communicating. Yeah. Probably one of the best communicators to ever come out of our field. Like this guy can relay a point on a fucking reel or something like that better than any of my professors ever. So good. So it's like, because he's, he's good at it. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's like, all right, man, like, we'll just get good at that. So, but again, I'm not like, 
you know, the inspiration thing, you shouldn't have to wake up, but like there, I think there's more people sitting on like the other side of almost like what we'd call like the pre-contemplation phase. And if you're looking at this yes. action, it's like, you know, pre-contemplation, contemplation, action. It's like, you know, anger is like, all right, do you got to move dog? Like go, go to Goggins <laughs> next, go to, you yeah. know, listen to coach him up podcast or whatever. Yeah, but that. after that, it's like, you got to take some fucking ownership yeah. and you got to figure out why you're mad. It's like, what are they doing that you're better at? Yeah. Right. Like they're not the anomaly. Like they're, they're just the accept. They're not the exception of the rule. They are the exceptional of the rule. Right. Mm. And it's like the quicker I, and everyone learns their own pace and timing is always perfect. But like the, the, the sooner you can move to that step, then you're going to start to be able to like, you know, to be productive and actually move towards your goal because like it, the, your people just you see them stuck in the cycle right and they just like you just like yeah, spit it out dog spit it out fucking like do something you know what i mean like what's wrong you know that industry? meme it's like the the guy with the stick yeah and he's poking the he's like do something yeah yeah uh-huh yeah do something were you ever stuck in that angry stage and then if so like how'd you get out of it uh yeah therapy yeah yeah I don't know, like and big shout out to all my therapists yeah. i've ever had well, over the past <laughs> there's been several thank you the to past the therapist five, the therapist five to seven years have. yes yeah. to deal with the shit with, you with, with what i brought yeah. up it's like god this guy came in today you got a four o'clock with riley i gotta five. i gotta yeah. get out of this business <laughs> yeah, seriously <laughs> yeah, no it's like and look like handle your business you know yeah. what i mean and it's like and then handle it in fucking private. Mm -hmm. Like there's there's things that in your life that should be sanctimonious that don't have to be on the internet. And that's how you that's how you know you really value something. Like you know we walked around UT and I was like I saw that big cow and I was like oh fuck can I take a picture of this? Yeah. But at no point like am I. Like me, <laughs> like oh, let's fucking get barbecue and Ben Ten. Like I don't want to fucking if I'm, if someone comes into me with that bullshit, I'm like yo, get like what do you. And it's it's really more like you know I'm, I'm I feel like I'm pretty solid with where I'm at, but it's like you're you're scratching the surface of life, dude. You know what I mean? Like people who and again, I'm sure it's not everyone, and this is not a fucking playbook of how to live your life. It's just how I've gotten here. And one of the things is recognizing like the people who are you know crying on Instagram and doing all that. It's like that's not the work. No, it's antithetical to the work. You don't get credit for the work. No, no, right? You get results for the work, right? Like, and that. So, like, it's tough because even there's been like a weaponization or a signaling attached to therapy lately, which is like totally. I'd rather that than people kind of sit there and try and be that old tough, like, oh, rah, 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 what's all that Oops, shit? Dirt. Right? Yeah, and it's like, but again, like, there's there's a part of that. You know what I mean? Like, there's, and I think good therapy with good intentions. He brings that out like you know good at least in my case what good i think is and useful you know right versus getting it right <laughs> is like is is drawing some lines of like dude you're just fucking believing your own shit and it's it's that it's shit like you're yeah. you're full of it like you're fucking you're just a, you're just a liar and so part of it it was like okay actually i do gotta throw some dirt on it and part of it was like you just gotta step the fuck up dude yeah. like you know what i mean like you got you can bitch and moan about circumstance or you can change it it's up to you. So like there was an impasse of like, oh, fuck, like, oh, I'm the problem. Yeah. But it's like, I don't mean to interrupt. I'm sorry. But you saying that it's like, God, that's so liberating, though, knowing like because I've had a similar experience, I'm sure different circumstances, but coming to the arrival of the understanding that 99 percent of the time, if I have a problem, it's not external stuff. It's I'm You're the I, I'm the common denominator. Mm. And I think one way to potentially uh, receive that information is self-pity or what was me. Um, another way in the way that I've found to be useful and productive is to say, oh, well, thank God. It's not all these things that are outside of my control. And th there are plenty of those fucking things. But. How I show up, my attitudes, my actions, all those things, I actually do have a lot of uh, power over, you know, so it, it, it moves me. It moves you from this place of like victimhood and, oh, this person got to where they're at just because they knew this person or X, Y, Z, that place of resentment. And for at least for me, in, incredibly cathartic and healing to understand it's like, oh, if I'm willing to accept this. And I'm willing to take the actions necessary to, you know, not be a liar or whatever the case may be. 
then I have a fighting chance at showing up as the person that I want to be to get to where I want to be, to rub shoulders and sit at tables like this with people I consider myself uh, to be like. Um, what a blessing. Mm. That's great news. I think you'd have to, it, it, there's no such thing as bad ideas. I think it's a Sam Harris thing. It's like, there's no such thing as bad ideas, just bad incentives. And I think social media offers the worst incentive, which is like, you don't want adulation for doing the things you should have done in the first place. <laughs> yeah. Right. And it's like, yes. you know, it's always like the, again, Ricky, that's a Ricky Gervais joke. It's like, why are we applauding people who like, you know, the recovering drug addicts? I have a lot of friends who've lost their lives <laughs> from drugs, unfortunately, but I have a lot of friends who've like recovered. It's like, dog. The end of 12 steps, I'm not giving you a pat on the back. So the <laughs> fuck are you doing blowing that shit up your nose for that long? You know what I mean? But it's like, but I think, and you got to be careful because I, I've seen people fall into a loop of, of like, you know, there's some sort of awareness created, you know, the Goggins videos run dry and then like, okay, I'm going to get into therapy. But it's like, you know, do the meditation app in the morning on the IG story. It's like, you're missing it, dog. Like, mm -hmm. cause you're going to get a, a, clapping like, emoji right. it's like hold on now you're getting positively incentivized for doing something that you should have done yeah now, and it's what coming you, what, from outside of you but it's like you get attached to that and you get dependent mm -hmm. on that so it's like oh, i'm going to do more therapy to get more reward it's like no no no, that's not how that's not why we're doing therapy right but you therapy to get out of therapy yeah. right yeah it's <laughs> it's and so it's, you got to be careful because like it's a minefield up there yeah. and it's like i i challenge people and it doesn't have to be like i, I think you should figure out what's sanctimonious to you and create boundaries for because sharing i was thinking I, I, coming from like a, a literary background coming from like a history poli site where you have to write a lot i used to I, my nick's nickname in in um, jeff nodding the sixth grade used to call me webster because he's a roll up and just read the dictionary and i'm, I'm not even joking i it was it was, I was the opposite of webster same <laughs> so but sharing when we were kids right then like when you're kids sharing is something that your parents try and instill in you right they're trying to instill like share with your sister right and sharing is usually like sacrificial i'm giving something up but what I gain in giving this up, the experience I'm giving it up with is something greater than the whole I had with the thing that I started with. Mm -hmm. When you share things on social media, it's not, it's not that share with your sister shit because you're not, you're actually gaining. Yep. You're gaining selfishly, right? And like I share stuff with you. We trained earlier, we got barbecue, sure. You know, that was great. It was fun, but it wasn't like every moment of the day. We talked a bunch of shit and we, you know, said stuff we probably shouldn't put on the internet, <laughs> which, hey, fucking rights. But it's like, <laughs> like people, like, look, like I challenge people to like share more without being incentivized. Share yeah. sacrificially, like find those people. Like, and that, that's what I think a therapist offered me first was like, whew. I feel good. I, I, I've given here. I'm giving this to you. Like, yeah. like here, like I'm, I'm, I'm opening. I want this, but I don't want anything in return. And that's where I think a lot of people like, I just, uh, I just see the pitfalls. I see where like, you know, someone might, and then the, it's hard because like, I'm trying to communicate something through a vehicle of social media and podcasting the vehicle of social media that is kind of like, antithetical and, and heeding warning to some of the pitfalls caused by the very thing that I'm, you know, use, I'm using it as utility to get this message across. And the message is like, yo, be careful of the utility. It's like, well, dog, like, yeah. like, <laughs> I understand the hypocrisy in it, but like, that's, that's part of the landscape. You have to start to navigate and like find things that are sanctimonious, find people you can actually share things with, you know, properly align your incentives with your values. And then you can start figuring your shit out. Then you move from that was, that was literally my, angry yo let's boot k star in the fucking dome like yo, so sorry kelly <laughs> to like oh but the thing <laughs> is like he's nice <laughs> the, and here's the thing i i used to and I'll, I'll speak in less like um sort of less from a place of proclamation and just like how what i found and this is i know this to be true now it's like i used to think that when the money came i'd be less angry mm. and then the hardest part was not like it was being in debt and living in my car and fucking, you know, on the road every other weekend and, and, you know, doing the fucking calorie meathead gasoline math of like, how do I stay in a surplus <laughs> with no money? And then, but it was like, when I figured out there, I was like, I got a fucking, this is a me thing. And then I like got on with my boy, Nat, and then I reconnect, like, connect, he's a guy from high school, actually, who, who went into therapy and I connected with him and he's like my guy. It was, that was the springboard. Right. People think that like, you know, you get there and then you change. It's like, no, it's the other way around. Mm -hmm. You got to, and it sucks because you're sitting there going like, 
oh, I'm going to smell the roses. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. This is fucking shit, man. I'm in like sure a... It smells like my forerunner. Yeah. I, I it. <laughs> but it's like, then all of a sudden, like that is what started to change scenario for me. Like that, it was the you, the, the, the change. Is, and it's funny because like, you know, I own a, I've co-founded a digital business and I, I work a lot in the digital space. We talk a lot about systems, right? Like that's what a business is. Like, are you making money while you're sleeping? No, then you, you have a service you offer people. You don't have a business. And there's so much in, you know, it's, it's so polluted, like everything on the internet and everyone's like, oh, like business mentorship, business, this, 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 this. And it's like, look, man, like, sure, yeah, systems are great, but you gotta become a better person before you fix a better system or create a better system. Everyone's kind of sitting there going like, well, like this funnel and this, and it's like, dog, sure, yes. Like, and, I, and there's a part of my brain and a hat that I wear that looks at that and pays attention to that, but the equal amount of effort goes into the person. Right. And it wasn't until this started to move that I was making like improvements in, you know, my my attitude, improvements in my my accountability and responsibility to myself and other people that then all of a sudden what came of that? I don't know how. And I, I just but no reproducibly it is if I pay attention to the person, then the systems get better. But people sit there and go, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this. It's like it's over there. Yeah. It's over there, dog. Yep. Don't, don't ask me how that translates. Yeah. But it's like fairly re read like a couple of books that have been around. For like, <laughs> and I'm not religious, but it's like, you know, like yeah. just read anything. It's been around for a long time. And it's like, I don't like no one's translated that yet. But if you focus on this, the stuff that you're worried about starts to just like sort itself out. It really does. Yeah. That's been my experience as well. It's it's uh, it's almost counterintuitive in the sense where it's like you would assume that if I just try harder here. Mm. that I'll make things more better. But the problem <laughs> is that more better. is that trying to solve or fix or implement systems with the same brain, personality, points of view that got you to where you're at are not necessarily and almost oftentimes not even close to being the new ways of thinking that need to get you to where you want to be. Mm. Yeah. Um, and that's definitely been my experience. It's like, oh, well, I got here. If I just keep pulling the same lever, then I'm going to get more of that result. And it's just not the case. It's in, and in that way, it's a lot like training too, where just because, you know, you started off a beginner and you were able to just linearly periodize yourself into some decent muscle gain. And then you run into a wall and you're like, fuck, I'm kind of hurt all the time. And I'm not, I'm stagnated and things aren't really yeah, working the out. Same lever. You, yeah. You gotta, you, you have to take a look in the mirror and say, okay, like maybe I should try a different angle here. And the thing, I like the parallel to training because like success leaves clues, right? Like I love the, there was a study, I think it was Ken Clark that came out with it. And he kind of had this, uh, um, you know, Ken Clark's a, a sprint coach. He, it was like early force plate data around correlating what the sort of that wave sign looked like on a graph and miles per hour. And was like, he could basically, you could put the sort of like force plate analysis down and he could tell you how many miles an hour that person was running. And it was like, you know, a collegiate level soccer. Uh, fuck, man, I'm probably going to fuck this up. But like, let's say, um, what's Bolt at max velocity? What is, what is he running? 24? Oh, dude, I, th I think it's probably. close to 26, 20, yeah, isn't 26. it? Okay. Yeah. Right, so fast. 26, right? So let's say like collegiate level soccer player on the field maybe is running like 11 to 13. And then you go into like a collegiate level uh, track and field sprinting, 100 meter. Maybe you're getting up around, I don't know, is, is, what, what are guys running? 21, 22, something like that, right? Yeah, or that maybe works. a little bit yeah. higher. That's probably like the top end guys. Like that's like a Tyreek type speed, right? Yeah, probably. Tyreek's probably 23. Right. Yeah. And then you'll, you'll be topping out. Like he's probably the fastest guy in a straight line in the league. And then, but what you see between, if you take the men's soccer or the, the, the collegiate soccer, the, the collegiate track and field, you know, like the, the wide outs, and then you look at the Olympic top eight and you take the data, you literally go like, this is, you know, it's so unforgiving technically that like the foot strikes the ground, absorbs, produces, transfers force this way at this speed and this way at this speed and this way at this speed. And there's not a deviation. So it's like, I think a lot of people, when they start to like enter into the realm of like, uh, it goes by many names of like self help or self improvement or psychology, like, oh, it doesn't really matter. It's like <laughs> you kind of have to accept that, like, look, man, like there's a reason people who get to this, like, whatever level this is, maybe it's like a level that you aspire to, 
there's not a way to move through this with like this is the way like it's there's the, and again like the contrarian culture of content creation has emerged new voices that go oh well actually i have this like really crazy technique that like works and i actually don't take responsibility and i just <laughs> and it's like yeah man like that's cool right and someone's like oh i have this thing that i do where i run the hundred backwards or whatever it's like right. yeah. okay like yeah i mean i've seen Devonte smith run backwards faster than i could ever run forwards <laughs> And it looks like he's just rewinding himself. <laughs> but I'm like, I'm not Smitty, so I can't do that. Right. So I'm going to be like, okay, everyone else who runs this way, I'm going to run. It's like, you can't, you don't get away with it. And I think that's what like the biggest thing is like, you can't avoid that. And cause like I was resistant. It actually took a friend of mine, Ben Pakulski, who, who I was like, I was like, oh, this guy has clearly got some fucking dog in him. Right? Like he was, VPAC was a pro bodybuilder. He's from Canada. I don't, and it was like, this guy could move in the gym, had that like gear, but it was also like, look, dude, like you gotta fucking keep shit in check. Cause like, mm -hmm. the, the, you know, that like, the anger you use when however you lift your weights, that's cool. But like, if you bring that into your relationship, like you're gonna fucking smoke yourself. And I'm like, oh, word? And he's like, oh, word. <laughs> and then it was like, okay, fuck. So like, <laughs> find whatever inspiration you need, but like those, the, those, those paths are clearly laid out. Like if you don't check yourself, like you're gonna end up, you're either gonna end up a dick or you're gonna end up not where you wanna be. So uh, we've talked about this before on the podcast. It's come up a couple times where uh, I think people underestimate um, just being like likable, just being like someone that and it sounds silly saying it out mm -hmm. loud even now, but like just being someone that other people want to spend time around because you can have like you can be so quote unquote good at your job. You can have all the, you know, all your I's dotted, all your T's crossed. And then if people spend five, 10 minutes with you and you're like, this guy fucking sucks. Yeah. Like you're going to have a really hard time get accomplishing much of anything at all. Right. Uh, what, you know, for you, Cause, dude, you've done so much in really what is a short amount of time. I mean, you know, 10, 12 years. Yeah, I'd have graduated. 11 years this year. What would you attribute? Because you're, you're someone who's, it's striking to me in the sense where it's like, you've obviously done a tremendous amount of work from an academic side of getting to where you're at um, and, 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 and in practice. Um, but then a lot of this conversation has been like, you know, the personal development, which I wasn't even really expecting. I'm yeah. glad it went this way. Um, Tough question, but how much would you say, what's more important to you out of those two things and getting to where you're at? And yeah, let's just go there. So the question being what's more important, like the, the, what I've done, the experience. The also. X's and O's or the personal oh, development. Personal. No, it's not even close. Yeah. It's not, it's not even in the same ballpark. Like, mm -hmm. because I think what one of the appeals to strength coaching other than like and you know what i don't even want to list it because i i, I you get find, to wear shorts all day that's the right yeah let's start like because <laughs> yeah. yeah. i, I yeah. think there's a like Full stop there are things that people look at and on the outside and it is cool like <clears throat> athletes are cool mm -hmm. right but like it's not my identity it's what i do but it's not my identity right and i've seen this like, and we know this in working with athletes the issues that and i've seen this totally. firsthand right like when you work with an athlete in any capacity they almost don't have a choice but to adopt that as their identity because it, it, it consumes their whole life because it's like the, the field is so competitive regardless of what sport you're in. It's demanded if, of you. If it doesn't, in, you know, especially at a young age where you're still, you're not even eclipse, you're fucking, your frontal cortex isn't you finished know. forming until you're 25, right? And all you think about day in, day out is in a lot of cases out of, you know, some sort of desperation almost like, yo, you know, I have baseball players from Dominican that are like, you know, they pull their whole family out of it. Right. right? It's like, dude, you, you, you want to talk pressure. It's like, talk about a whole city on your back, <laughs> right? Like you got to show up and get, you know, uh, you got to, you got to hit a certain batting or on base percentage so like people eat for the next couple of generations like that's that's pressure so it's like strength coaching i think one of the the thing that and it's hard it's probably it's probably just my lens on human behavior through the vantage point that i look at life is what it's what i do and it could i don't 
I can't extrapolate and think that like real estate agents have the same level of like uh, a, a um, temperamental proclivities as <laughs> coaches, but maybe they do. Like maybe. maybe there's like a real estate podcast that's like going deep on the psychology right now. <laughs> right. I can't see being passionate about like, well, it's a bungalow with a detached garage. Like it just like doesn't <laughs> right. make sense. You just right? say detached garage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. And an ADU. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. it's just like, <laughs> I think one of the things, like to answer the question, like personal or thing, it's like, it's it's not a question of it should never be a question like in anything you do because it's like it's just what you do yeah it's not who i am right yeah. like you i know. think we only talked training for maybe during when we lifted and oh that was and that was for it. youtube yeah and that was for youtube yeah check it out soon but oh, after that shit. like i yeah. don't think we talked about training Once. at all no i like oh. pulled on like the long cable thing yeah. in the gym i was like <laughs> This oh, this is, is, tight. This is yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was it. And then we like looked at cameras and we like watched some fucking seven footer just drain pull up jumpers. Like, this is unbelievable. <laughs> Look how big this cow yeah. is or whatever. Like, <laughs> but it's like, but you know what? It's, it's, it's not a bad default starting position. Like I, 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 and I see why people are drawn to the profession as an identity. It's, it's cornerstones are discipline. It's cornerstones are hard work. It's, it's cornerstones mm -hmm. are improvement. But it's like that cannot be the cornerstone of who you are, right? Because you know, you're. We talked about this sort of the structure of collegiate strength and conditioning and how it should be tied to the GM. And like, you know, I know strength coaches that it's funny. I, I forget who I was talking to the other day, and I was asking them where they're from, and it's like, you know, sometimes you get the answer like ah, military, which is like a it's a weird answer if you don't yeah. understand what people mean. Like if you never met someone in the military, you go, oh, where are you from? And they go. The military is like, where is that? It's like, <laughs> well, they're kind of saying everywhere yeah. because, like, you yeah. know, their dad or mom or both were like moving yep. around and like, yeah, I'm in fucking, I'm in San Diego or I'm in for wh wherever the military is all over. And it's just like, strength coaching can be that. But it's like, and it could also be gone, right? Like, it, look, there's a day, and I'm well aware of this, where my phone's going to stop ringing, where no one in Austin's going to give a fuck about what I have to say. So it's like, I better be ready for just being cool with that day, mm -hmm. right? And it's like, you better start now. And so it is, and why I think like real estate is a, 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 a not a, a, you know, they don't, people don't suffer from this, this thing is because you can, you can get accolades for it. Like you, when you go to the grocery store, people are going to make a comment about how you guys look. And it's like, yeah, you know, I'm a strength, like oh, I can tell. Yeah. Right. And it's like, yeah, it's right unique here, yeah. in that. Right. And it's like, <laughs> I mean, it, it, black eyeliner and like nail polish. Like I play in a metal band. Like, okay, maybe that, but it's like, I don't think <laughs> right. metal band. I think, wow, like, this guy's really dedicated. Like, this, guy, <laughs> this guy is up at 5 30 AM playing just, the drums. Just, right? just riffing. Yeah. And yeah. it's just like, so I shredding his I, face off. It's a, I, I think, and it, like, I've tried to think about it dispassionately and outside of my own lens as best you can. And, uh, but I think it does offer that as an identity and it can be very unsettling to realize that that's not an identity mm -hmm. and it can be very hard to detach from that. And I think when people go through this process, like, you know, and go through that, what like you're kind of having this wrestling match with like, no, 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 no. but like, it's my job. I have, to, I have to, it's just a thing that you do. Yeah. And someone gives you money for it and then you go and you should have a life outside of that. So the personal, and the, and the, here's the thing. And like, I, this could be a selling point if like just having a more enjoyable life isn't a more like a selling point already. Whatever you think the outcome of personal development is, it's not going to be that. Yeah. It's not gonna, whatever because we're like you said earlier. It's like the mindset of someone who has to go through that work has a certain level of incentives that are malaligned that they're trying to correct. The byproduct of correcting that malalignment and you know not fucking dude. I was when I'm, when I'm Corey when I were at Stanford, I was having panic attacks. I was hospitalized. One of my clients was a head cardiothoracic surgeon at Stanford. I remember being getting a twelve lead EKG on the the president of the Stanford Hospital's desk in his office because I didn't have health insurance. Wow. And so my client, Paul Mohabir, takes me up. I'm like, dude, Paul, like I, I had like a fucking weird thing happen this morning. Like I was 280 pounds. I was fucking strong, doing what it takes to be that big and strong. Mm -hmm. So fill 
on the gas on that. Right. And he's like, <laughs> so he get echocardiogram and EKG. I had an echocardiogram on the bottom bunk of a resident's sleep quarters on the floor of the ICU. So some fucking med student sleeping in the top bunk. Paul comes in with an echo and one fucking intern. I'm sitting there with my shirt off on this bottom bunk. <laughs> Homeboy literally rolls like, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> and I'm getting like an echocardiogram and I think I had a heart attack. Yeah. Right. And he's like, and I had another friend of mine, she was a, she's the head of clinical psychiatry at Stanford. And he's like, yo, you gotta go to talk to her. Like I, if I could, if this wasn't like what I was doing wasn't so against university policy, I would actually keep your echo on file as like, this is what normal looks like. This is healthy. You know, you got a bit more muscle cause you're, but the, you're good. Mm -hmm. Like you're clear. All heart scans are sweet. And it was like, he's like, dude, your fucking head's cooked, dog. Yeah. Right? Like I had like, oh, I work at Apple. Oh, sick. The status. I'm like, oh, I, I, you know, my, my, you know, I was in a relationship. I was married at the time. I had the dog. I had the whole thing. And it's like, that was not aligned with what I wanted. And I was like, I had to go to fucking work on fixing that shit. And what I thought I wanted there and where I am now after I've fixed that alignment problem is so completely different. But I'm it's exactly where I want to be. And there's no yeah. dissonance there, right? I was thinking like, oh, I want to do this, 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 and this. And then I like got my shit right. And then, or better, I mean, probably a better way to word it. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh no, no, I'm actually, I'm super happy over here. Yeah. Right. And I think, you know, whether it's detaching from your, your identity of, on this path or having an attachment to the stuff you think you want yes. on that path, Trust me, whatever's over here, whatever alignment looks like, the goal that you get to is just way better. It's not even, it's not even better is like, doesn't capture the, the magnitude of like, <laughs> like, you know, I, I thought the cheese sausage was like a little bit better than one of the dry ribs yesterday. Yeah. It's like better is like the wrong word. <laughs> it's like, it's it like, it's, it's, it's the, to me, it was the difference between life and death. It's like, if I right. throw, I'm going to have some sort of fucking anxiety attack. I'll be on a bunch of pills or I'll just fucking neck myself. Yes. Or, but then, but like, oh, but like, I really want, like, I really want like a fucking, like, what if I got like a 10,000 square foot house? What if yeah. I work my way up? And I was like, now we said the other day, I was like, dude, I want a fucking shoebox. Yeah. I don't even know what my apartment looks like. <laughs> well, I don't know. I pay rent. I hear it's nice, but yeah, like, I'm never positive. there. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, the, the personal development. And again, but like, and I have to say it with an asterisk because it's like, and it's not keep that shit to yourself. Like, I don't care. You'll never find someone that cares more than me. But part of me caring is like that work has to, you got to be, it's going to suck like a long time. Yeah. And it's like, you have to deal with that. You got to settle that debt. So like, not that I don't care, but it's like if you, sh the way you care is keeping it sanctimonious and like talk to your people where you can share. It's not on the fucking internet. It's not, yeah, no it's one gets circle. it's Yeah. Get one. And you know what is you make this turn, you'll figure out who those people are. Yeah. Yes. And there's people in my life that aren't in my, and it's, and here's the biggest thing. And this is what drives me nuts. And this is where I'm get like a little bit, Con concerned. It's literally just concern. And it, I'm not the fucking be all end all. But when people like when people go down this path, they they have such a resentment for like, oh, man, like I used to hang out with these guys and like, oh, they were just holding me back. I'm like, dog, they were keeping you alive. <laughs> no, legit. Like there's like there is it's you're just you're running an old I ran an operating system that kept me alive in a place with minimal resources where I didn't like if my sister didn't get a full ride scholarship to university I probably didn't go because there was yeah. money enough for money and she was way smarter than I was I was I literally told my grade 10 math teacher I was like I think I'm gonna be a radio DJ I have a podcast now so that's kind of cool yeah. but it's like <laughs> did it, yeah I made it I made it showed you fucker <laughs> it's like but it, so it's it's you know when you go down that path it's like yeah, fuck. It, you have to, you have to, I, I'm, I've completely lost my train of thought with the radio DJ. I can't believe I thought I want to be a radio <laughs> DJ. It's but it's like, you know, you ran an operating system. Yeah. And you have to be grateful for that operating system because it like got you to a point, it kept you safe. Mm -hmm. And it's like, dude, nothing else could have done that. It's just time to like, so if you find yourself going down this road and like, you know, fuck, who the fuck am I? But like, it's not my area of expertise. Let's just say that. But it's like, if you find looking back and you're like, 
man, like, oh, I wasted all this time. And like, I fucking, well, why didn't I? Well, it's like, because like, yeah. you would have been what? fucking dead. Yeah. That's what that operating system was optimized to survive. And you just, hey, oh, iOS fucking 18.5. Get the download. 18.4 was bullshit. <laughs> I was, what do you mean my emojis didn't make faces? Like I could talk. It's like, who gives a fuck? Yeah, right? Yeah. It's just like, yeah, just let it go, dog. It's cool. That was old operating system. You're still alive. Gucci. All right. New operating system. Like, be cool, man. Everything's going to be fine. Yeah. Download the new you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and some don't do that. Don't, because that's a, that's a podcast now. Someone's yeah. going to start that. <laughs> the <new> nah. <laughs> oh, man. Jordan. None of the questions are probably relevant to what we're talking about. So, uh, load management. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Segway. Zach's known for the segues. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, we were going through, I was like, oh, this would be a funny segue. I was like, uh, offloading mental stress to a therapist. How do you offload physical yeah, stress? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> trying to bridge that. Like, oh, we're on a ringer here. I can't yeah. stop. Uh, all right. So, you know, um, we've got a few segments. Let's go ahead and jump into segments yeah. um Pumped. and uh you why don't you do play up matt okay is it uh coach him up five it's coach him up five we I was, pause we're bad at segments it's oh. just not our our forte um we're getting better um and now zach is going to start downloading with a new version of myself with oh, the, God. yeah i'm just concerned by the way you're holding the ipad if i'm being honest <laughs> It's like, you know, when you did reports in school and like, don't look at the paper, yeah. you got a freaking, you're like, nah, 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 nah. the cue cards, you're going to yeah. shuffle. Remember where they transition. Yeah. This next segment we have is by Plyo Matt, the best Plyo Matt in the world. Yes. Pick another one. It's second best. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that's on you. Uh, <laughs> it supports us. Coach them up five. Get on over there. Get you a Plyo Matt. There you go. 5% off. There you go. Rant and rave. Anything. About the world, training, whatever you want. What are something you want to rant about right now? Can be anything. No, I, I, so I will. Uh, maybe I'm going to have a very brief rant about ranting. Done. Okay. Because well, I just think we don't need more of that. Like the best idea, the best, the antidote to a bad idea is a better idea. Leave it at the door. Leave it at the door. Just come out with come out with the gold. But right? I don't need. I don't need you like. I don't need to drag, don't drag someone else in the mud. Don't sit there. If someone else is, you know, the, doing the bird and the teeth thing and, you know, is posting something that you don't agree with, you don't have to fucking put them on blast. You don't. Because here's the thing, man, like, and trust me, or don't, I don't really care. But I do. <laughs> but like, I found in my experience, I'll use that as a disclaimer, it's like my, the, the, the students that I get to teach, the athletes I get to work with are all a direct byproduct of how I project myself. If you project yourself as contentious or contrarian, or um, let's use another big word, a dick, you're, <laughs> you're gonna get that. Yeah. And like you just don't. So like, you know, I, I get, it's tough, man. Like it's, it, I'm, I consider myself really lucky that I do timing, right? Like in so many areas of my life, like I, where, when I went to school, the same time as like the best dude I know. And my business partner, Jordan Junta is the best dude I know. It's not even close. Like I have, I have friends, but I've been more through, I've been through more shit with that guy. There's not enough lifetimes I could live, and I'm not gonna live that long, that I could meet someone who I know is a better dude than him. Mm -hmm. So like the likelihood that this, like that one alone of like this kid from Dallas, Pennsylvania, happened to on October 1st, 2010 or 11, walk into the same fucking room as I did, and we like got along, and now 10 years later, 12, fuck, that would have been 15 years later, have this business. And then started social media at a point where it's like, and everyone feels this way. I felt this way when I started like, oh, like I'm late to the game, I'm mm -hmm. late to the game, podcasting. Like my friends uh, started Mind Pump podcast, like, oh, we're already late. You know, they had um, Barbell Shrug was already fucking blowing up. And like all, and it's just, it's tough. Like all I'm saying, it's like, it's tough. It's, it, it, and it'll be tough, but if you start now, 10 years from now, but like, do not, like just, just try not to, just, just don't just don't do it. If you have an idea, just say the idea or just say the idea. Cause you're going to be like, people will subconsciously be drawn to like, Oh, I really like that idea. And that guy just seems cool. Mm -hmm. And I like the cool guy with the idea. And like, you don't got to cut people up. Like you don't got to chop. You don't got to like, you know, you rant and do all this. You just, just be like, this is what I do. And it's going to be slow, but it's like, what are you going to do after? 
we what is it? What are you it, training turned into like stripping somehow? Like, oh yeah, I, I trained through I trained my way through college. And then like, where are you, where are you going? Where are you going? You're not doing anything else, dog. Like, I don't I want to do this forever. Yeah. Like I'm not trying I'm not trying to get out. Like it's not like I'm not ashamed of what I do. So it's like just yeah, just steady does it, man. Like a little bit of patience. Be cool. Like you know, you can get you're gonna get that oh man, I could like get ten thousand followers if I fucking did it this way. It's like you're gonna get ten thousand assholes. Yeah, like, like you just when you wake up and, and negative comments and fuck, and it's like, oh, man, I don't need any of that in my life. I have none of it. So like, my rant is like, yo, just just be cool and like, just you know, if you have an idea, just say the idea and don't you don't and because if you don't and you're saying like, this is wrong and this is right, like you don't have an idea. You have a counterpoint. Yeah, you're just a jerk, right? Like you're just a jerk. Yeah. So it's like just. That, that's my rant. It's like, yo, we just got to give me something about this profession. Maybe it's the testosterone. Maybe it's like the competitive nature of the athletes we work with. But like we, people are just attached to that energy. It's like, dog, are you trying to kill yourself? Are you going to be dead at 50? Like, stop <laughs> with the shit. I'm dead. That's my rant. Well, we were talking about, I shared with you guys, that kid that DM me, like, what are the best uh, books and whatnot. He was actually someone who commented on one of our posts, something super negative about the speaker. And I screenshot it and sent it to him. And I was like, stay off social media, especially negatively. And my point was like, I never see people like you or like top coaches in the field in the comment sections arguing. Or are you being like put, putting somebody's video in your talking head of like, this is so stupid. I would do it like this. And that was my point. Like yeah. you should just, what, what they tell you in grade school, if you don't have anything nice to say, just don't say it. Yeah. Show a little bit of restraint. We need a rave. You got to have a rave. A rave like? Best rave you've ever been to. Rave like music? No. no. Like uh, oh, anything no. you're uh, <laughs> super pumped on now. Um, something that you're all about. And to me, it's just the company. Yeah. I'm really excited about the direction. We got the right people in place. Like our team is nuts. Like our the instructors we have with us, like the podcast, the level one, level two, level three what we have in the pipe for business development. Like, I think a lot of people talk about like, oh, like I'm gonna change the industry. It's like, okay, you know how much that costs? Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. so it's like, for me, it's like, you know, ante up, money where the mouth is, like we're running full steam ahead. So it's, it's, the, it's the business. How does sure. that feel coming from a guy that never went to conferences and now you're throwing on some of the best conferences around? Um, I don't think about it. Yeah. I just, cause I, I to me, it's like, and it's not, obviously it's not for everyone and I don't want it to try to be for that. But for me, it's like, how did I learn? Like I learned through experience. I learned through stories. So that's what we do. Like, that's how we teach. And you know, and some people are like, yeah, but like, I need to like, do you, oh, okay. Like, yeah, go, go. I'm sure there's a place that does that. But like, for me, it's, it's replicating and, and, and patching the holes in the formal education that I got. Hmm. in a way where I think that I can relate to coaches and relay these concepts more efficiently without digging them into a quarter million dollar hole and taking, you know, 15 years of yeah. their life. I think I could, I think I can distill it into, you know, if you're level one, two, and three, you, depending on what time of year you sign up, you can probably get through all three in a year and a half to two years, which is like, you know, a concentrated education on applied biomechanics, functional anatomy, coaching, communication, and done in the real world. Like the last time you come out with me while I teach or while I coach some of the best athletes on the planet. Like it's a trade, like we talked about earlier. I, I got that concept from Pat Davidson and like huge shout out to Pat. But like, it's, you're an electrician, but you're also a carpenter and you're also a plumber and you're also a, a, a woodworker and you're also a tiler. And you're also a roofer, right? It's a trade. And so it's like, yeah, in two years, like if you put a fucking DeWalt in my hand and you had me following around like a, you know, a group of master craftsmen that I had access to every single day, uh, you know, through our, uh, our collective product with a C, not K, but shout out collective anyway, <laughs> um, like through our Discord channels, through our labs every day, through our lectures four times a week, like, yeah, dude, you'd be able to build a fucking, you will be able to build whatever the fuck you want. And like, that's kind of our goal is like, look, I went through the ringer in getting to where I needed to go. And I think in that process, it took so much of my time to just like cover a bunch of stuff that I don't actually use that I didn't have the time to like focus. And like dude, at level three, when people get to us, it's like, yo, you're standing too close to that guy. Yeah. Like what? I was like, 
yeah, dude. You know what that guy does to people who are that close to him? <laughs> he, they, they throw him 10 yards. <laughs> and like that other guy's 300 pounds. So you're like a buck 85. So you're looking more like 20 yards. Right. So like, <laughs> or like we had this way. one, I love this story. We had a, we, we did an L3 um, for our NFL off season in June. A really, really sharp coach come down. And I'm not going to use his name, but he'd be cool if I did. And <laughs> he was, he was go, like X is no guy. Like, you know, we spent two years on applied biomechanics and functional anatomy. We would go through shoulder, hip, and spine in L1. We talk about how to bridge the gap between corrective exercise and exercise correctly. Then we do a rib cage, spine, nervous system, really dig into principles of problem solving. And then L3 is like, all right, here, you guys got it. Like, you go through the tests, you go through the labs, you understand. Like, you spent hundreds and some people, like, I don't know, I I honestly think some people are in the thousands of hours with us. It was a proving ground, right? I'm not putting a fucking stamp on you of our highest level until I can see that you can move. And I know some guys who come in and the academic side and the execution side is like a little like, you know, we could tight, we tight some stuff up, Mm -hmm. you know, we can get, but communication, forget about it, lights out. And then those guys are the ones that win, right? So, and well, we had this one guy come in, X is no solid, sharp, real smart, dial on paper and communicate pretty well. And uh, we, had, we had a lineman, um, was it Rob Jones? It was Rob Jones, Miami, uh, Miami Dolphins. It's the nicest guy in the world, but like, he's, he's a lineman in the NFL. Right, like, yeah. He's fucking damn good, just re-signed. And like, one of the things, <laughs> you know, we kind of like, all right, here's the program, we go through it. You know, anyone have any points on execution? All right, you, you, your rack, you're gonna be with this coach. We're gonna have these four guys and we have spreadsheets. You know, we had Biggs, you know, just, just who was on that rack. Rob was there. He had another guy from Miami fucking blanking on names. Um, anyways, four, yeah, like you're probably looking at a ton plus four dudes on a rack. And, you know, we got a guy from the northeast end of New York, like lives by the village. And he's like, so we're going through incline dumbbell press. And I don't know what was said. And like Rob kind of stands up after and he kind of like goes with one of our coaches and comes over and he's like, Yo, you got to check your boy. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, oh, this is like, I got to keep, there's those, those guys got to be taken care of, right? And I was like, what the fuck happened? And he's like, he comes over after and Rob, very like cerebral. Like, Rob is dialed. Like he's come to work. He's a professional athlete. And he comes over, but he's like really lighthearted. He's singing, he's putting on, he's putting on Chris Stapleton. He's putting on, you know, <laughs> yeah. he'll put on some, some drill stuff. And, but like, don't confuse kindness with weakness. Like he's there to fucking work. And I guess the the coach in middle of the set cued him to be more deliberate. And like, that was like a trigger word for him. Yeah. And he oh. came, he come marching over. I, I mean, he's, he's, he's leaning up. He's probably like 315, Shit. but like six to three, six, four, 315 solid. And he comes over, you check your boy. And I was like, oh, he's gonna kill someone. Like, what <laughs> yeah, the fuck? yeah. And I'm like, what happened? Because I don't know, dude, I just told him to be more deliberate. And like one of the things we talked about was like, yo, keep the language real simple, right? Deliberate. And it's it's for no other means of just like, the cues, they, if they're elaborate, it means they're doing the wrong exercise yeah. and you gotta pick a better movement. It's like, we're just trying to hype, right? Like, you know, faster, whatever, whatever, slower, but like deliberate, it's too much. Well, Rob shows up on Friday with a shirt that says deliberate AF. Get the wow. fuck out of here. That's, I guess, like the, the line coach. Yeah. Uh, he'd be O-line. The line coach drills that into him. So like, you ever see bigs on like, doing the skill work, hitting yeah. pad, like their hand work, their <clears throat> footwork. Wow. And like, you know, they might just be touching a pad, but it's deliberate. Right. So we I, mean, I had no idea. Right. Like I didn't I don't know what the the line coach is down in Miami right. is like, you know, his thing is. Yeah. The mantra and mantra. So he shows up and it was it was the last day of training for the week. And he shows up with the same. I was like, oh, this is perfect. This is it's poetic. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. and but that's the stuff that we learn. Right. And that's 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 the trade. That's the skill. Right. Like one of my favorite quotes is in theory, there's no difference in practice and theory, but in practice there is. Right. Like I think a lot about the the Australian <laughs> breakdancer with the PhD. Mm-hmm. And it's like, that's how a lot of strength coaches move in the weight room. Right? <laughs> they just look like kind of spastic worms with a diploma. It's <laughs> like, all right, dog, like this is this is the proving ground of all proving grounds. Like I can't think of maybe the all blacks rugby team would be a slightly more intimidating group. But I think on the whole, like 30, 40 off season NFL kids or 30, you know, hungry NCAA going to the draft kids. It's like 
you know, the old Tyson, like everyone's got a plan until you get punched in the face. And it's like, you're not far off in this room from someone fucking chucking hands. Yep. You know, so that's that's what I'm excited about. It's just like, that's my whole focus. If it's not that, it's a distraction. And I, you know, it's, 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 it's just noise. So that's that's my whole life. Well, that's a good thing to be excited about. That sounds yeah. fucking awesome. Yeah, it's fun. Um, all right, next segment. This is brought to you by Squat Wedgies. Use code COACHEMUP15 for 15% off. Um, okay, so three things that someone can start taking action on, mm -hmm. three action items to get to where you're at today. I mean, the only thing I can say is the three things that were that I deem important that move the needle for me. I don't like, I, I, so I got to frame it that way because I don't like giving proclamations. And if anything I've said, and I hope up till this point, I've done a half decent job at checking myself and being like, this is just what I did. Yeah. Right. For me, travel. Travel. Hmm. Everyone's like, oh, you know, you got to um, read books. Which like, yeah, sure. Yeah. You got to whatever. But nothing will give you perspective. Like we were talking the other day, we were talking about we were talking about traveling because we weren't talking about training. Yeah. And <laughs> and we were sitting in Terry Black's eating this most absurd, off like this disgustingly amazing meal. And I'm like, man, the more I travel, the more I realize that America is actually one of the like one of my favorite countries in the world, which is like odd, right? Because America kind of gets a bad rap for not being cultured, mm -hmm. but the more like I've been to 77 countries, my goal is, you know, depending on when I get to cross the line, it's like, the, you know, what governments are in power and what the UN recognizes. <laughs> I just want to be everywhere. It's like 192 to 200 countries. And it's like, you know, perspective, right? Like how little the stuff we can argue about matters. Mm -hmm. And it's like how different life can be and still be enjoyable for people like we get so siloed in in stovepipes inside of stovepipes inside of stovepipes that for me traveling has been the single biggest accelerator for me in improving perspective and just like you know there's a lot of talk about like gratitude again gratitude isn't an app that's on instagram or whatever like you want to you go to uh, what would be a good place to start heavy dose of gratitude i don't know fly into nairobi Fly into Nairobi and just take a cab somewhere and just, you know, fly into, fly into Tunis and in fly into the Carthage airport in Tunisia and just, you know, just, just get ahead, get ahead. <laughs> get, get out there. And it's like, you know, decide, walk amongst the people. Decide whether or not you want to get in the cab, number one, <laughs> just because that's, that's going to be a thing that you don't ever consider when you just get in your Uber and, you know, the, the, the Sonata pulls fine. up. Yeah, yeah. That's that. I walked three and a half hours through the Tunisian desert from the airport because I was not getting in one of those cabs. <laughs> and it's like, there's no, there's no, there's nothing that can compare to that. Every time I get on in an Uber now, I'm like, oh, sick. This yeah. is the best right? scenario. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. right? Like, there. yeah, red Honda Civic. Yo, what's like, yo, dap me up, dog. Yeah, let's let's nice. do this. Just let's the, drive to the blue dot, homie. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's so like, yeah, for me, travel. Like, travel is like you just get out of the worlds you create for yourself and you realize the world that you're in, and you're like, oh man, I was way off. So that'd be number one. Um, number two, call your mother. That's probably like, you know, and if you don't. Like if you're not if you're not vibing with moms, vibe with moms. Yeah, vibe with moms because you're like figure shit out. And maybe you got to fucking the route to that is you know getting a, getting a therapist and talking to them. But like call your mom, like you know, because that's a, another dose of perspective. Like you you get to an age in your thirties and you're just like, you know, yeah, your parents are cool, man. And you because I think when you, you you have kids and you could speak to this better than I can. But like I have friends who have kids and I start to understand my parents more because it's totally. like totally you no, know, they were just they were just I'll thirty year olds. Out. Yeah, dude, That's they were just thirty year olds. Like, dude, I I don't have kids because I'm not like I'm an idiot. Like, <laughs> and like I'm kind of pieces of them, and they were so I'm part of them. Then they were brilliant in figuring this out in a time that was probably in some ways way harder. Yep. So it's like, call your mom. Uh, number three, uh, create in some way, shape or fashion. Like, yeah, you don't got to fucking become Picasso. And one of the things that I find as a real creative endeavor now is exercise programming. Yeah. But it's, and one of the enjoyments, I remember coaching online, starting coaching online like 10, 12 years ago and like doing spreadsheets and just dude, I fucking, I would have to like glue my eyeballs open to, to write spreadsheets. I hated it. But like now I see what we do as like 
and uh, large in part to like what you guys, like how you guys move. And I like see so many different ways of training now. And like, you know, the stuff that you and Corey would do. And that's how I got onto you and watching your stuff. And it's just like, we, this is such a creative medium, right? If you let it, like, you know, you can be fucking Picasso or you can be color by number, but it's like, you know, the, the, and if it's not, if you don't find it that in training or whatever, like that's cool. But like, you have an outlet for creativity. Like, you know, I, I, I play guitar. That's sort of like a, a thing that I've done my whole life. And now I see it so differently now than what I did before. Right before I used to be like, pick up a thing. Oh, smoke on the water. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> now it's like, I just kind of like, I don't know. I just kind of like fuck around with stuff. So it's like, I think that those three things, you know, travel, call moms and create whatever that looks like. I think those three things are at least have served me well. Incredibly yeah, I think solid. The creative outlets huge, especially if it's something not exercise related yeah. or something like us. Like, I like that. Um, our last segment brought to you by Prescript. Hey, how do you like that? What a company yeah. you like that? Unbelievable. Yeah, we yeah. would have to talk. I, though, for real. Like, like, I that sounded nice. It sounded that, 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 real so nice. that might have been the smoothest thing you have ever I, seen. Uh, yo, checks in the mail, dog. Yeah. <laughs> Nuts. <laughs> how do I? Well, how much to get that mine bigger than theirs? <laughs> yeah, we'll talk. <laughs> we will be okay i'm having a hard time answering the question right now yes. that was amazing so the next one's called unsolicited advice so today you get to the airport you're all settled down um you realize you're at the wrong gate you gotta hustle to the new gate it's delayed you're standing there a young person walks by looks kind of lost um what kind of advice would you just give them hmm i, I really like the moniker of like uh like be where your feet are. Mm -hmm. I feel that's like that lands, and that's that's that, that that circulates, and I think maybe subconsciously I've seen it the last couple of days. Like okay, I fuck with that. But like given the context of like someone looks lost and they're young, it's like you probably because they're making up a story that's not actually like people. What is the old uh, saying? People suffer more in their head than they do in reality. Oh, totally. Like yeah. So it's like I find that every now and then like a very anchoring of like, huh? Okay. Like I have. Um, I have the, the words here and now tattooed on my thumbs, mm -hmm. like right, right here. And like, that's sort of me, like I, in one of my, one of my therapists, actually one of them, shout out to all of them. Shout out to therapists <laughs> yeah, yeah. all over the yeah. world. Yeah. Therapists and moms, mom, <laughs> the OG therapist. Hey, hey, man. <laughs> and it says here and now. And then when I was like in the peak, oh not peak, fuck, I still feel like I'm in the peak. When I, I was traveling a lot the last couple of years and I had this, this guy that I used to catch up with every week and you know, I'm like, I prioritize this stuff and it's on my calendar. I'm running a few minutes late and I get there and I'm frazzled. I hit the fucking zoom call, whatever. It's like, Oh, what's up? Good. Oh, sorry. Man. Blah, blah, blah. And for an hour he sat there and was like, uh, like what time is that? And I was, and at first I was a lot like, and I was like three minutes late. It was like four Oh three. And he's like, what time is it? I was like, Oh fuck. He's giving me the gears for me in three minutes yeah. late. I'm like, Oh yeah, man, I'm like really sorry. It won't happen again. Like, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, and I can kind of see like he wasn't mad that I was three minutes late. He's like, what time is it? And dude, for an hour, he asked me, it was the only thing. And by the end of it, I was like, dog, like, yeah, was, are, are, are you, are you sweet? Like, are what, like, it's, it's fucking, it's yeah. 459 now. It, yeah, and, yeah. Chill. and he's like, we'll talk about this next week. We'll go to the next hour, same thing. Fucking week later, four o'clock to five o'clock on like a Tuesday or whatever it was. And it finally kind of dawned on me the answer he was looking for, which was now. And he says, where are you? And I was like, oh, I, cause he traveled a lot. He's like super successful. And like, I was traveling a lot, not, not successful. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm in, I'm, I'm in Boston or whatever. And he's like, where are you? And I was like, oh, uh, I think I'm in like the South end. I'm close yeah. to, I think I'm close to Fenway. And he's like, oh, we doing the CN yeah. dog, like yeah. we doing the time thing. And I'm like, oh, here. He goes, yes, that's what, wherever you are, you're here and now. And yeah. I was like, oh, fuck. So I got that fucking blast. Hell yeah. yeah. So that's like, that to me is like, if I do not have time to tell the guy about my tattoos on my thumbs, I just go, <laughs> you be where your feet are. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dude, don't don't here. Here. Yeah. Hey, come back here. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. 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 Come here, yeah. I just want to show you something. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. That, that would be my unsolicited advice. Um, dude, I, it's happened so quickly, but we're out of time, which is crazy. Um, but Jordan, dude, thank you for coming out. And this was so much fun. This is awesome. It really was. And, uh, where can people find you? Give us the whole deal. Yeah. I mean, my Instagram is kind of like the hub of it, I guess for me, it's, uh, at 
the underscore muscle underscore doc. Uh, Prescript is www.pre-script.com. Instagram is pre underscore script because you can't put a dash in a I thing, know. apparently. Now you know. Um, also, if you're going to start your own business, don't put a hyphen in the middle of it. It makes it really annoying to say it on podcasts. Um, <laughs> that's it. So, like, website <laughs> with all the courses is there. IG, Prescript. Uh, we do a podcast to RX, RXD Radio, RX Radio, um, YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, all that stuff. Hell yeah. Jordan Shallow, everyone. Thanks. Thank you, so Jordan. Much. Appreciate it, dude. Until next time, y'all.